Hello everyone, I'm so happy you're here because I have a message I want to share with you all that's straight from the heart of God and this is going to be for very specific people and you're going to know that I'm talking to you as I continue on. You all know that I'm in my prayer time before the Lord every single morning and sometimes I really just sit and spend extra time to meditate and ask God, what is it that you want me to share with your people today? What is on the heart and minds of your people today that they need to hear that you're doing right now, right now word, you know, we call it a Rima word. Um, give me a Rima word, Lord, I say that sometimes. So you all know I do my prayer and I do my meditation, which is really just sitting there and listening, you know, really quick side message. A lot of times when we're in our prayer time with the Lord, we are talking the entire time. That's not actually meditating on the word of God. That's not allowing God to minister to you if you're talking the entire time. So I, after I do my gratitude and my prayer, my Bible study, I sit and I allow God to minister to me things that are on his heart, things that he wants to say to me about myself things that he wants to reveal to me or convict me about something that I've been doing or things that he wants me to share with you all. And today in my prayer time, God was beginning to reveal to me that a lot of you have been going through a dry season in your walk with the Lord. And what I mean by dry season, you have been going through a season where maybe you felt like your faith has been attacked where you are not necessarily, you know, your faith has been watered down or you have been in been beginning to doubt God or some of the things that he said to you. I wrote it down here. I have notes here, so I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. Um, maybe um, certain circumstances have happened to wear you down, right? To help you um, or to get you to doubt God. And not only doubt God, but get you to doubt yourself, right? Get you to doubt the abilities that God has given you, the things that God has already placed in you. So doubt God in yourself and to water down your faith. But here's the thing that God is saying. Here's the thing that I heard God say clear as day. He's sending a, uh, a fresh fire. The fire that you once had for God is coming back. It's coming back and there's a specific reason for that. And I have scripture to back it up. And there's a reason for it's coming. I'm gonna to get to that and I'm gonna to read to you the scriptures and I want you to write it down. But the fire that you used to have for God is coming back. There's so many of you who were at one point, you were on fire for God, right? You, you know, usually this is the beginning of your walk, right? You were on fire for God. All You were so hungry for God. You were so hungry for God's word. You were hungry to learn more about God, to learn more about his character, to learn more about his people, what it is that he wants you to do. And then somewhere along the way, it just dwindled out. Somewhere along the way, you lost your fire. And I don't know what that could have been. Maybe you got wrapped up in worldly things. Maybe you got wrapped up in certain people or maybe you got wrapped up in certain jobs or environments or whatever it is. Maybe it was sin. Maybe you have sinned and the Lord has um, obviously forgiven you for that. But here comes the enemy. He comes in with condemnation, shame and guilt. But we know the word of God says that he did not come to condemn the world, but he came to save the world. And I, I have a message that I, a whole message that I want to do on that topic alone. But really quick side note, you all, as you begin to feel feelings of shame and guilt and condemnation, that is not from God because he didn't come to condemn you, right? He came to save you, save your soul. There's a difference between feeling condemned and feeling convicted. If you feel a healthy level of conviction within yourself, then that nine times out of 10 is from the Lord. He wants you to take a look at something in your life, take a look at something you've done, said, and turn away from it, repent from it. But if you begin to feel condemned, like deep uh, condemnation and shame, you have to shut the enemy out because that is not of God. It makes you feel that you are unworthy of God, right? But the thing is, the enemy wants you to feel that way because he has been condemned to hell for eternity. But God is saying that for those of you you were on fire for God and somewhere along the way, whatever happened, that fire has dwindled down, right? You don't feel as on fire for God anymore. He's saying that it's coming back. Why is it coming back? I wrote down a list here. He's sending his Holy Spirit to minister to you so that you can be bold because he needs you to be bold in this season more than ever. God needs you to be authentically you. Why does he need you to be authentically you? Because there are people who are operating on earth right now and they have an agenda. It's a demonic agenda and they are bold. So why aren't you? God needs his people to be bold so that you can say what you mean and mean what you say. Because let me be honest with you on this. There are so many times that, you know, if you were on fire for God, 
the enemy will send people into your life to try to silence you and not only people but circumstances situations organizations right to try to silence you but you need to be bold so that you can say what you mean and mean what you say and so that you can step fully into your authority as a child of god and not be silenced by people or circumstances that came to make you small or shrink and some of you know that I'm talking to you right now because you've already began to shrink and feel small based on things that have happened in your past, right? No, God is sending you fresh fire, a new fire, because he needs you to step fully into these things. I want to take you to, um, well, first I want to tell you really quick before I take you to the scriptures, why God is sending you fresh fire. Let me know if you're following me here up, in this, up until this point. God is sending you a fresh fire fire into your life. Really, it's his Holy Spirit. He's sending his spirit to dwell deeper in you because what comes with the fire of God, you will always see deliverance come and you'll always see promises being fulfilled. Now, I want to take you to scripture so I can prove to you why that is so. So I want to take you to, and you can go there with me if you want to, uh, Exodus chapter three, verse two, and then we're going to go down to verse five through, through eight. It says, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame, it's talking about Moses, a fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And he said, and I'm going down to verse five. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from thy feet for the place wherein you stand is holy ground. So right there we know, anytime God sends a fresh fire, anytime God sends the fire of his Holy Spirit into your life, you, you are standing on holy ground. Anywhere you go, right, when you're on fire for God, and I know that many of you have been there, <laughs> anywhere you go, people can just feel the fire of God on you. People can see the anointing of God on you. This is something that God had to reveal to Moses, like, you see this burning bush, you feel the presence of my, um, of me being in the bush, you're standing on holy ground, take off your shoes. And so he says, moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob and Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. This is uh, what Moses did, right? And this, this is a message within, within itself. Notice how it says that Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look upon God. This is the very thing that begins to happen to you when God puts the fire of his Holy Spirit within you and you're on fire for God and you're anointed and it's clear as day. When you begin to show up around certain people or in certain atmospheres, they will literally hide their face from you. They won't want to talk to you. They want to avoid you. And it's because these people themselves feel a strong conviction. It's almost like if you... I did a message on this actually a couple of weeks ago, I believe, where when you are fully walking in your power as, as who it is that God has called you to be and you're not backing down from it, when you show up around certain people, you are shining, you're, you're holding a mirror to them. Let me just put it that way. You're revealing to them all the things that they need to change within themselves because you're walking in alignment with the word of God. The word of God is, a, um, it says it cuts, right? It's a double-edged sword. So when you're living your life by the word of God and you begin to uh, go around certain people, they feel a conviction because they are not doing that, if that makes sense. Uh, so this is why it says Moses began to um, hide his face from God. And I, I always wonder when people begin to stand before Jesus on that day, on judgment day, there are going to be many people who hide their face from Jesus because they're going to be crushed under the weight of their own convictions. This is what happened to Moses, by the way. But I'm going to go on. It says in, in verse seven, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. So God is saying to Moses, Look, I've come, you see the fire of God in this burning bush. I appear to you as this. I have come because I've heard the cry of my people. God is saying, your fire has dwindled. You're no longer on fire for God. You've been going through some things, but he's heard your cry. And verse eight, it says, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of their Egyptians. There goes the deliverance. And to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large land, flowing with milk and honey, this is the promised land, this is the promise, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the per Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. So immediately after we see the fire of God, 
we see deliverance. We see God saying he's come to deliver his people and we see promise. We see God saying, I'm coming, I'm coming to deliver them and not only deliver them and just bring them into a strange place that they're going to continue to struggle. No, I'm coming to deliver them and take them to the promise, the things that I promised them. And I want to also take you to another scripture that backs this up completely. The reason I'm sharing this with you, with you is so that you can expect these things. The moment you begin to feel the fire of God come on you again, like you did before, this is why this message is for specific people, know that deliverance is coming and promise is coming. So I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 through 29. It says, his voice shook the earth. Then, but now he has made a promise. His voice shook the earth then, but now he's made a promise. Still once more, I will shake not only the earth, but heaven also. The words still once more reveal the removal of what is shaken, the things that are part of this creation, so that what isn't shaken will remain. God is saying that he will shake heaven and earth for you. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, get that the kingdom of God it cannot be shaken let's continue to express our gratitude with this gratitude let's serve in a way that is pleasing to God with respect and awe because our God really is a consuming fire there it is again Hebrews chapter 12 verse 26 through 29 it's saying that God will shake heaven and earth for you to make sure that you receive the kingdom of God which cannot be shaken right which cannot be shaken. Um, so please know that. Please know that, and I want to make sure that I'm being very specific here, that this is only for certain people who your fire has dwindled. God is saying he's sending his Holy Spirit into your life to place the fire of God back within you. Place the fire of God back within you. Even though the, heaven, uh, the kingdom of heaven cannot be shaken, God is saying if it comes down to it to make sure that you receive the promises that he has for you, he will shake everything. He will. Um, but I love you all. I want to leave you with that. And I want you to look out for when, when you feel the fire of God come on you, I want you to look out for deliverance and the promises of God being received. It's coming. It's coming. And I know that your faith has been attacked. I know that the enemy has tried to come to set everything up against you and come up against you to make you doubt God and not only doubt God, but doubt yourself and doubt the things that God has said. But there's a fresh fire that's coming. I know so many of you, I know so many of you have said, Lord, I used to be so on fire for you. I used to be so on fire for your word, for the things that you had for me, um, for your people. And then somewhere, you don't know how it happened. It just dwindled. It just faded out. God is saying that he's not forgotten you. He said he's, he will never leave you or forsake you. It's coming back. And it's coming back because he needs you to be bold. He needs you to not be silent. He needs you to not shrink or be small because the people of the world, they're not doing that, right? They're, they're, they have a demonic agenda. And so God is saying he needs you, he needs you to not um, shrink or be small, right? So I can go on with that. I can continue going on, but I'll leave you with that. The scriptures I read to you was Exodus chapter 3, verse, uh, we can say verse 2 through verse 8, and Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 through 29. Let me know if this resonated with you below. Put it in the comments if it did. Um, I love you all. I know that this is only going to be for specific people. It's not going to be for everyone. Um, and there's so many resources for you below. Actually, I would encourage you all, because I do this with my seeds, I encourage you all to leave a Hebrews 12, 29 seed. Hebrews 12, 29 seed. And whatever, you know, the Lord leads you to shape that, you can do that on your own. I ask that you allow God to lead you in that, only if the Lord leads you. And you all know that, you know, the Promise Land Mentorship is below, the Promise Land Roadmap. There's so many beautiful testimonies that have came from both of those. Um, you can check out more on what that is below. I invite you to share this message and I invite you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That is for you so that you're not missing out on anything as I continue to upload these messages. Let me know if this resonated with you below. I'll talk with you in the next message.